Hello everybody and welcome to this video, myself and Peter. And we are here to look at the Bakun Lumiere clarinet. Now this is a fairly new addition to the Bakun custom range, alongside the MOBA, but with a different kind of characteristic and feel, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's kind of uh, going for the more sort of European sort of market. They're looking for a sort of a lighter sort of sound. Um, really, in comparison to sort of the dark sort of um, qualities that we talked about in the MOBA video. Mm. Um, this doesn't have that. It's, it's, I don't know what, what the kind of the, the, the words are, really, but there is a, there is a sort of um, more translucent sound, I think, and especially with a Coca Bolo instrument as well, with that sort of sweetness that we talked about before. Yeah. So the Lumiere is available in Coca Bolo or Grenadilla. This one we're just demonstrating is the Coca Bolo. Uh, it's available with gold plated keys, with silver plated keys, and also with silver keys and gold posts. So those are the kind of three finish options. And like the MOBA, it shares many of the spec, pretty much identical in terms of it having the yep. automatic low F vent, uh, which is operated automatically through the uh, uh, register key being on or not on. And uh, obviously that corrects that low F intonation and tone color wise mm, as right. well. Um, extra A flat, E flat key, and also the, the sweep, um, the inline swept, shall we say, uh, side keys there, which we talk a little bit more about in the MOBA video, so you can check that out. But that helps avoid too much moisture congregating in those side keys, which can be an issue. We've been playing long orchestral rehearsals, yeah. two or three hours, four hours, etc. Yeah. You often see people <laughs> blowing away. That's right. And no, no danger so much of that here. No. Another difference, actually, with the Lumiere we wanted to just touch on as well, Pete, with the black leather pads that mm. Bakun now use on this model. And now it may be that those start to come in on, on other models in the future, but they've, they've launched them with the Lumiere. It's a customised black leather pad that they have made specially for them with uh, a sort of um, a hard insert within it, which, which cause sometimes leather pads can kind of suck the, yeah. the, the projection or direction mm. out, of a, out of a clarinet. But that harder insert just bounces, a bit like a, like a um, uh, saxophone pad. <laughs> it's not on the outside, but it's on the inside, That's isn't right, yes. Yeah. I think it acts as a, um, you know, as a kind of reflector. Yeah, to the a resonator. Sound. Yeah, a resonator. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so, uh, I mean, I, I, I've um, not experienced these pads, I have to say, certainly on my Mobas. Um, I've got the, uh, the old um, uh, the Valentino pads, which yeah. is, uh, you know, which is what they've used for, for many, many years. Um, um, and yeah, I think this is it's certainly a new, new departure for them. And um, in a way, it kind of gives that Im Im impression of, uh, like, you know, we've talked about the old Boozy 1010s, they used to have leather pads. And yes, of course, they're on saxophone as well, they still use the leather pads. So there, there, does, that, there does feel that nice sort of, um, uh, you know, when you, when you press the key down, it just feels like it, it really grips the tone hole, you know, yeah. it's just, there's, there's something nice. Solidity there. Yeah, there's a definitely a solidity. And they're very particular about the air tightness of, mm. of pads. Back in, they use a special uh, tool which actually checks each pad before it goes on for that air tightness and, and resistance. And the black leather are water resistant, just like the Valentino pads are as well. So I think, well, maybe before we do any more talking, Pete, we should let you play, because mm. it's such a beautiful clarinet. And there's a couple of other bits of spec I want to hear. Sure. But let's have a little listen. So I know you're a MOBA player, as mm -hmm. we've discussed. This feels a little lighter of feel, but there's still depth in it, isn't there? And yeah. that flexibility to push from you know real piano up to as much as you want. Absolutely, yeah. There, there's um, <clears throat> excuse me. There, there is a definite core to the sound. Um, it doesn't feel as dark as a MOBA. It does feel lighter uh, and uh, sort of you know more translucent, really. Um, but you don't lose that sense of evenness. Across, um, across the range there, um, and it, it definitely, definitely connects. Um, and I think the Coca Bolo, again, just adds a kind of, um, a sort of, 
um, a sort of sweetness. It doesn't have the sort of ping that Grenadilla can often give, mm. you know, to, to the sound. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a lovely instrument, it sounds, really. It sounds good from here. <clears throat> but <laughs> there's a couple of other bits of spec I wanted to hit, and then maybe we'll get a little bit more playing. Sure. They do use the carbon fibre uh, rings on the uh, middle joint there and on the um, bell, uh, you know, top joint there. And those are interesting because they want some solidity, but the feeling is with metal, you can sort of suffocate that mm. transmission of vibrancy through the instrument. Yeah. So with experimenting with the carbon fibre, they found that's a really neat way around it. It doesn't add too much weight, but it still adds core strength. Yeah. And it allows for that free-blowing free nature. Now, the Lumiere comes with the Lumiere bell and uh, barrel, which are quite different to the MOBA. Again, not as heavy, so it's following that same theme. Mm -hmm. And there's also a little bit of overcutting going on on the uh, FC uh, tone hole, which is also on the MOBA. And that's, again, just to allow uh, for the air, I suppose, to speak freely on that G. <coughs> that's right, yeah. Anything. I mean, you know, it, the, the low G on many instruments can be an issue of um, being fairly resistant. Um, and the so the, the, the wings that have been undercut there, I don't know if you can see that for the camera. Yeah, we'll get a close-up um, as well you know, that just helps to kind of disperse the air this way in order to allow that G to resonate so that there's not a huge difference between that and the A and, of course, the low F um, next to it. <laughs> So you get really even, yeah, very you know, consistent absolutely. transition. Yeah, and actually, on a lot of instruments, that can be a real duff. It can, note, yeah. Can't you it? know, you can end up kind of playing a really nice round low F or A, and then have the G to be like, Ugh, yeah, you know, and you feel you've got to work quite hard with the diaphragm, you know. Yeah, you know. but I think that's a really neat example of the level of detail that Bakun go to on this custom series range of instruments. So the MOBA or the Lumiere. It's not a better or worse, they're different and it might depend on the player and the setup and what you like and what your concept is of, sure. of sound and where you use it. But it's every little detail down to how the pillars are attached, uh, just literally being dropped in as opposed to pressure being put on and, and screwed in. The, the offset keys there, the carbon fibre, the undercutting, the overcutting, the multiple stages of how they cut the inside shaping on the bore, which is all done uh, with a very special tool that isn't just heated and, and pushed in and all that. It's an yeah. actual special cutter. So they've basically, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm not a Bakun artist, you know, I've got the wrong T-shirt on, <laughs> but I think they've taken what we should expect as a, a quality level yeah. up, a, up a couple Absol of notches. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. They've really, they've really knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's no going back, really. Yes. To the old, the old ways, you know. There's no putting up with um, instruments that are a bit stuffy, instruments that that don't have an even scale. Um, all these kind of things that clarinet players for many, many years have put up with, whereas oboe players and flute players have had those. They're you know, over that. They've yeah. had all that. Yes, you know, so they had yeah. that 20, 30 years ago. You know, and, yeah. and clarinets um, are catching up now. You yeah. know, and um, we're yeah, we're definitely living in an age where um, we can really, really all benefit. The clarinet community can definitely benefit. Cool. So do check out the video we've done about the MOBA. And if, and if you fancy Bakun, um, but maybe this is a bit above where you want to be price-wise, there are the Q series, the Protégé, which we've done other videos on, which are maybe a bit more approachable for a student or an upgrading student, yeah. but you still get this Bakun characteristic, same quality of wood and manufacturing and everything else. But maybe let's hear a little bit more from the clarinet, Pete, if we can, just to blow us out.